just depends how fast you want so that you can react to it. Yes, sir. The closest thing is cotton, which is on a regional basis in Texas, stocks on the Toronto Stock Exchange, and eggs in uh, DCI, which is in New Hampshire. But those are basically blind matching systems. And this one is not. Well, if you notice, if you see that the spot, if it's spot intermediate or future, you know what the delivery time is. If you know what region the trade occurred in, you already know where it went to because it's, the system is designed to tell you by region. So that you can't see that by looking at the market summaries. Now, this is a whole new world, and people have to learn new strategies and how to develop how they sell meat. And there's no doubt about this is, this is all new. Yes, sir. West of the Rockies, you said, I heard you said they used a different system. What has been their response to your uh, idea? In the present time, West of the Rockies trades fall in the garbage can. They're not even part of the marketplace. They operate uh, on negotiation, or they operate based on the system that occurred east of the Rockies. As you see here, the Western market will be part of the system. But this system here it allows the Western market to be the Western market without interfering what happens in the Eastern market. But anybody can see what's going on. Today, you, if the Western market falls in the garbage can, you don't know if we need to sell it for more money out there. But they have some sort of a bid offer system out there for beef, for example. Well, only one major buyer does that. And he's looking at this system, and I'd say that he's going to, he's one of the people I count as a participant in this system. They like it. Yes, sir. Absolutely, that's what it's for. And so flexible that uh, it's my opinion that if they saw a regional market strong in one part of the country, they can get you more money for hogs in one part of the country or cattle, then now they can't tell it. Any more questions? I don't anticipate that little stores would trade here. I anticipate they still do business like they do it now. I don't, as I said originally, I don't think that 300 to 1,000 major companies would be traders. We're trying to capture the trading of carloads of meat between the big people, which is what sets the price today. Pardon me? Well, you're not out. You just do business the way you do now. Right now, what do they do? You got you got to have the big guys first before you get to the small guys. Small guys can do business based on the formulas of this system. If that's what they want to do. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we could report less than carload lots, but it it changes the the numbers. In other words, carlo trading represents fifty cent market. Less than carlo lot may represent 51, 52 cent markets only because it's less than a carlo, not for any other reason. So if I mixed 52 cents with 50 cents, you wouldn't have the correct market. The present system only is trying to give you a base level to start from. And we want to do the same thing here. Technologically, we can have buy box trades there. And maybe we'll have a parallel system at some time where other people, smaller people could deal with each other. You just have to separate it from the problem system. Well, I want to thank you for allowing me here and listening to this uh, presentation. And I have some information I left at the tables, which uh, you should take with you, which explains the slide presentation, as well as a copy of the meat sheet, so that you know what it looks like if you haven't seen one, and a pamphlet that describes uh, information about meat sheet and how it applies to you. And thank you.
Thank you, Bill. This may or may not be the direction that, as Bill explained, that everyone is going to take. I can assure you, though, you will see computerized marketing. It will be along these guidelines. Whether it's this system or one comparable, of course, remains to be seen. It's kind of interesting to me, after hearing some of Bill's comments, uh, how many board of director, national board members are here? There's several here. How many of you recall about a year ago when we handed out to the national board a request from the meat department that you go back to your state secretaries of agriculture and inquire about those federal funds that were being made available for exploration toward something like this. This is an offshoot of that, as Bill stated. It isn't government supported, but it is a program that is an offshoot of that exact thing that we discussed about a year ago, if you recall. We have about 15 or 20 minutes that we would like to ask your involvement with us on. Merle Sunken, the director of the Hog Division, We'd like to give a uh, short wrap up of the hog division for the convention for your benefit. When he's done, I'll give a very short wrap up as I see the direction we're taking. I would remind you there is a young farmers meeting at 730 in this room. Your attendance would I'm sure be appreciated. I think it would be informative to you. So you're certainly invited, Merle. Would you mind coming up? Thank you, Walt. I will try to wrap this up in a reasonable amount of time. I would like to tell you just a little bit of what uh, was what has happened in 1979 and some recommendations from our division for the 1980s. 1979, uh, shortly after uh, the first of the year, we did go out with a sow sell-off program in February. It was something that we as a division could see coming down the road, even though at that time we was enjoying $47, $48 hogs, over and above the cost of production, futures market clear on through until late into October and November of 1979 it was running anywhere from 44 to 46 dollars and everybody was pretty well satisfied and pleased we put it out and we had some reaction not to the degree that it was necessary to take any further steps then again in May we throwed out the same situation and was getting quite a sum of hogs from our membership. But here again, it was the dedicated members of the National Farmers Organization that was willing to take the lead to start the total sow sell-off program and had to be developed in order to make the achievements that had to be done. And November the 6th, of course, we had many, many calls just prior to that from our membership wanting to know what was going on in the hog division, what they could do, what we could do as a hog division. And once again, we referred back to our membership and that are you people yourselves to decide what this organization could do. After some consultation on it, uh, Yvonne Woodland made an announcement on November the uh, 6th that Des Moines, Iowa to go into a hog sow sell-off program with different implementations of it coming up on a later time. And tonight we did release a news article that was put together this afternoon. The information on there as far as the sow percentages that was used in that statement was very definitely came from the Department of Agriculture, Washington, D.C. 
and some of the other statements on there uh, have all came from basically the market news service wires and so forth and we passed them out here as you came in. I think that the National Farmers Organization once again can take credit for a great portion of the movement upward in the hog price in the last three to four weeks. And once again, I've said it in my meeting this afternoon, but just in case that you didn't hear me, I want to challenge anyone from our hog division to show me someone in this industry, universities, the agricultural people, the economist, or anyone else that predicted a $40 hog market or better in the last quarter of 1979 or for the year of 1980. I want you to show me one. I want to tell you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, it's already happened. Because in the past three weeks, we have locked in for sale for our producers and the National Farmers Organization better than $44 for next June and July delivery on their hogs, and that's the money you put in your pocket, and that's not the money you play with on paper. Now, I want someone here to challenge that statement if you choose to. And I also recognize that the National Pork Producers Congress have the best promotion on pork this year that I've seen in many, many years. They've got a lot of credit coming. But it was only until November the 6th when this organization took a stand and said we was going to do something as producers that things started happening. And I imagine everybody wants to know here this evening what's going to take place in 1980 as far as the saw sell-off program is going to, whether we're going to continue it, whether we're going to do away with it. I'll be going into that in just one moment because, yes, once we do have, again, recommendations for you producers that's members of the National Farmers Organization. I would like to also say that we have renewed contracts this year with the largest supply of hogs that's been slaughtered in this nation, probably in history, but I'm safe to say for many years. I do know that we have had in the month of November, when the prices was going up drastically, I do know for a fact that we have had the largest slaughter ever recorded to the best of the USDA figures that we can find. And this is in the upward of 372, 375, 376,000 head of hogs in one day. And at the same time, we as an organization was able to break into new packing, new packer outlets. We've been able to negotiate contracts. We went so far in the last month, was able to help a packer that we have not been doing business with to set up a grade and yield program. The packer called the National Farmers Organization. He asked if we could help him set up a program that he could begin a grade and yield program in his slaughtering plant. Yes, Roger Blank took the trip over and helped him get it started and hopefully it'll be in underway in early 1980 and I'm talking about January. Yes, we have total acceptance. Yes, the rest of the people in the industry and the people at home that's not in this meeting here today and your friends and neighbors up and down the road that don't think that we have any power. Well, I took the, on the statement that was passed out here a while ago, I didn't use our figures. I used the USDA figures that we received and also found out what the trend of the other people done when we caused an action. It caused a reaction and that's the figures on it. Also, we have been delivering hogs through October and November of this year on the forward sell, selling prices and these we've been delivering yet 
transfer into November for $44 to $45, while the local interior Iowa market was at $32, $32.50, and $33. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we do have the programs. And now what is our recommendations? For 1980, we recommend that you as producers go through the National Farmers Organization forward sell program and lock in 25 to 35 percent of your hogs when the price is above your cost of production. Lock in the prices where you can pay your interest, possibly you're lucky enough not to have any. You may have to pay for a few loads of feeder pigs if you buy feeder pigs. If you've got a note at the bank, it's pretty good insurance to make sure that your hogs are locked in at a set price. We're doing business with five of the five major packers. I've stood on podiums like this before and I said many a times years ago that we think we'll be able to do business with some major packers next year. Yes, we did do business with one major packer this year. Well, tonight I can tell you we do business with the five out of the five majors. And if you want to drop it down to 10, we're probably doing business with nine out of 10 of those. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, your program has been accepted. Now, how are we going to go to increase our volume? Well, Walt, mentioned it here real casually several times today in the opening statements of the meetings that he thinks that we may have through whatever reason neglected getting the information out to our meat committees the collection point people to the members of our organization that they deserve well i promise you here this tonight for the hub division that this will happen. We will do the very best of our ability to make this a reality for you in 1980. Our program is that we will be coming out immediately after this convention with what uh, agreement that you would call a commitment to ratify because I think it's time we get the contracts of the Hug Division back out right in your hands and you make the decisions because you're the ones that made the decision on the South sell-off program, wasn't I? I want you in on the negotiations. Cecil Connery presented here the day that he wanted a committee set up for each collection point, a committee to work with the bargaining aspects of this organization. No, we don't expect you to be able to go in and negotiate a contract as well as Roger Blank, myself, or some of the rest of them. We don't expect that. But all the ideas that we get, they come from you people. You're the most vital parts of this organization. And if we've neglected you in any way, shape, or form, I'm sorry for that. And I'll tell you what, we're going to try our level best to get as many people involved at the local levels of the meat committee people, and it's humanly possible. There's going to be times it's probably not possible for whatever reason. But we want to go out, put blocks of hogs together, negotiate for them as a unit, and sell them as a unit. Another aspect that we're going into, we do have professional graders in many of areas across the country that can put up a load of hogs to anybody's specs. But we did find out there's a big nucleus of organization out there that we haven't scratched as a organization that's called USDA graders. And in many states you have USD grading programs in feeder pigs, feeder cattle, and of course in Georgia you have it on hogs, fat hogs now. We've started one in Tennessee in the past 30 days and we expect to expand it across the nation wherever it's available to us. 
because we, the taxpayer, you, the producer out there, you're paying their ways. So we might as well use the benefit. Most of the packers that I've talked to is willing to accept the fact of the USDA grades. The only thing wrong with the USDA grades in some packers' eyes are the, the problem we have is when you grade the USDA grade number one hog, it's that real long meat type hog that you see at the county fairs and the packers hate their guts. And that's the reason that you see in many of county fairs where you take a grand champion hog that's got the big purple ribbon and all the trophies that go with it, you put him on a kill floor and he come up about 19th on the kill sheet. There has to be some problems worked out there, but I've not found one greater in any state that's not willing to sit down with us and help develop a program for us to use. I think that's a large benefit that we can get a lot of good out of in 1980. The programs that we will be working on the most of all is of course our carcass merit programs, our forward selling, our direct deliveries, the USDA grading system, and don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, as many fringe benefits that goes along with this organization, like assured checks. Your hogs are assured from the time they leave your place of business at home until they get through the collection plant, if they go direct from your loading chutes to the packing plant, they're insured 100% for death loss protection. If a packer goes bankrupt, your checks are assured there, 100%. The last problem we had was when Frosty Morning, Clarksville, Tennessee. Yes, we had a little money in there, a load of hogs, but the money was paid back. The membership was paid 100% the day of delivery through our custodial accounting system. It's a beautiful program, and I think you and your neighbors ought to all be a part of it. If you have any questions, we'll be out at the hog booth all day tomorrow. Feel free to stop by, and I've never been so proud of any one group of people as what I am of the group of people at this convention this year, because once again, I know for my own self-satisfaction that when we do something together like this sell sell off program, I know it works. Thank you. Thank you, Merle. This uh, wraps up the livestock and meat department's presentation for your benefit here at the National Convention. Unfortunately, uh, it seems that we only have this one day to make do for what needs to be done daily as far as communication is concerned with you as a membership. What Merle's referring to and what I did hit on at times today is in regards to the fact that we need to extend this communication and this training process this year. It's vital. Time is of essence that we get it done as immediate as possible. I would ask that the members that are involved with county committees or are involved as county officers go home and set up these meetings with a tentative date. Call in to Cecil Connery at the home office and tell him when you feel you're ready with enough producers that would warrant the expense to come out and start these meetings immediately. As far as the livestock and meat department is concerned, we feel we've made tremendous strides this year in negotiations. We feel we've made innumerable inroads as far as member solicitation, new membership. We've set a certain amount of records this year in regards to new membership that have been signed. The membership new signs are much more 
now than they were even as recent as 90 days ago. Simple reason for it is 15 to 16 percent interest, the potential of a 20 percent inflation this next year. Those things combined with tight money as far as the rural banks are concerned make it imperative that you extend your operations into marketing. That is the lifeblood that you have. It's the only source of income that you have is what you receive for the product. You notice Bill didn't hesitate when the gentleman asked him what this thing was going to cost. He didn't ask, what will you give me? He told him what he'd take. That's where the position we have to maintain, and that's the position we've got to develop this year coming. In regards to what you've heard here today, we hope as a department that it has been beneficial to you. We hope you've learned something in the short time we have had to spend with you. We've tried to convince what we felt could be retained, and we've tried to project it and present it in a way that you can take it home with you. As Merle said, I would encourage, if we can keep the booths open tomorrow due to the General Assembly, I would encourage any of you to come by and visit with us if you've got questions pertaining to any of the departments. We've got the slaughter cattle and the lamb department, the feeder cattle, and of course the hog department. And they'll all be over there, and we'd welcome any of you to come by. I would like all of the staff of the Livestock and Meat Department if you would stay in this room for about another 10 or 15 or 20 roughly minutes, certainly won't exceed that. And I'd like to visit with you just briefly. If there are collection point people here, we would like to encourage, encourage you to stay. Any of the staff, we would like to ask you to stay. I don't know if the feeder cattle staff are in here, I can't see if they are. I don't believe they are. Steve, would you mind making a fast check to see if they're up over there or not? But otherwise, we certainly appreciate you people's attention. We have enjoyed your participation this year. We look forward, of course, to more participation this coming year. And so for the meat department, we thank you very much.